So um, I was asked a few years um, back in 2016, they were looking for new members and some of the friends on the committee said he's just way too busy. So don't tap him right now. Then maybe a few years later, I, they were asking for people to do a gospel concert for Legacy Day and I go to change United Methodist. And so we came together to do a concert for, it was 2017, and then we did it again in 2018. And then they said, well, you know, how about you join the board, the committee? And I got on the vendor committee, handling vendors, contracts, and things like that. And that was about all I did. Then I started to see the potential in Legacy Day and said, you know, how we can grow. And I early was trying to come off um, being chair and she was looking for somebody to step into the co-chair role for a little bit and so I you know I kind of offered to take the co-chair role on and then the pandemic hit and then we did a kind of um, a hybrid role she and I did and then by the time uh, 2021 after the pandemic was when I took over the chair role. I, you know it's, it's interesting because you see all the different parts to get it together but I really, I see it like two things. I really see a lot of unity um, because our committee is very diverse. We have different age groups. We have different races. We have different backgrounds. And I really see how those backgrounds can come together to unify and make something um, happen in Kent County, especially where African-American history is still being uncovered. And I think it's really amazing to see us all come together for that. Um, it's amazing to see the types of donors and the partners that we get from year to year and really seeing, you know, hearing their voice come through our programming. I'll never forget last year, I was, we were on an African-American history walking tour uh, with Chesapeake Heartland, the first time we ever did that. And two of our donors were there. They give given us a substantial amount of money. And I was thanking them. And one of the things I realized and I heard them say, you know, it's no problem is that Things like this, things like the tour is the reason why we do it. We want to expand the history and we are grateful just to be able to give. And so, I, you know, you get to see those types of stories come through. Oh, so this year we are honoring African-American fraternal and community organizations. Um, and this is our 11th year. Uh, when we say African-American community organization, we're thinking about things like the NAACP, we're thinking about the uh, Henry Highland and Garnett alumni, uh, the Hospital Auxiliary Number no. Two, uh, things like the Masonic Temple and Rock Hall, Eastern Stars out of uh, Kent County. So these organizations are um, what we are honoring this year. Uh, we kicked off the month at some, at the Historical Society with our opening of our exhibit. Um, which showcases different panels on these organizations and members and a few individuals who really were profound in the community organizations. Yes, last night, which would have been um, this past Thursday, we had a um, donor appreciation party for any donor, partner, or producer that has helped produce Legacy Day this year. Um, next Friday on the 16th, the 16th, we will have our opening reception which will be right here at Sumner Hall. That starts at seven, but before then, we've added an exhibit um, titled Pride Without Prejudice, and that is focusing on the debutantes from Kent County, African-American female debutantes and cotillions um, that were sent to Baltimore to participate in the debutante and cotillions at the time. So that's gonna be starting at six, that's the opening. And then the seven is our, our, our main Legacy Day reception where we talk to each group, gets honored and recognized. And then after that, we invite you know, folks to come down to the Chris Serena building at the Town Marina where we'll have light refreshments and a dance party um, to just kick off the weekend. So that's Friday night on Saturday the 17th. We will kick off the day with an African-American history walking tour, which will start at the Customs House. Um, and that's put together by Chesapeake Heartland. Then at 10 a.m., we have a Schooner Sultana sale on the Schooner Sultana. Then at 1 p.m., we have another Schooner Sultana sale, um, and that will be at the docks as well. 
Then at 2 p.m. we have a gospel concert at James United Methodist Church. And uh, that will feature the Mount Olive Praise Team of Wharton, Maryland. And then after that, we take a little small break, and then our parades kicks off at 4. And then our opening events and festival kicks off at 5, and featuring this year Best Kept Soul, um, which is a band out of Wilmington, Delaware. And then on Sunday, what we're proud to add would be the um, our black Brunch with Black Authors, a champagne brunch with black authors. And these are authors who grew up in Kent County, grew up in Queen Anne's County, who are coming to do like a very book fair style. Their books, poetry, authors like Yvette Hansen, Mel Brooks, Lisa Moody, these are all folks who are coming to produce the books and, and many more. 